Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Zoe and today we're going to talk about group escorted tours and the pros and cons. Hello again. So, what is an escorted group tour? Well, they come in many shapes and sizes, but as a general rule, an escorted group tour is where an external company has arranged an itinerary to visit a region or a country, and they have planned the hotels, all the activities, and in some cases, your flights to the first destination and home, but not always. But that's the general premise that you go on holiday with them and everything is arranged. And you go in a group of people, hopefully that are like-minded to you, and enjoy the tour. Now I say that that's the general rule. There are many, many different types of tours. So you have your sightseeing tour. So if you want to go to a country and visit the main sites. That's your common escorted group tour. You have other interests. So you will have, you, if you look for them, you'll find group tours and group adventures for other activities like bird watching, hiking, anything that you're interested in. There will be a group out there doing that. Then you have different tours for different age groups. So there are some tours that are for backpackers and younger people. And then there are tours that are for older people. But our discussion today is going to be focused on your escorted group tours that are going to sightsee around a particular country or a particular region. And for the most of those, especially from the UK, the flights from the UK to the destination and home again will be included. And everything else will be included too, or your hotels or your transfers. Now there might be some things that aren't included, like you might not have all your meals included. Um, there may be optional activities, that's quite normal as well. But in the main, you will see most of the main sites in a tour with a bus taking you from site to site. So the main pro of escorted group tours, everything is organized for you. You basically just get to the airport, get on the plane, meet your group, and follow the itinerary all the way around. Couldn't be easier. You're told when to get up, where to, when to meet on the bus, when you're, where you're going next, when to eat, everything is done for you. Easy. And it's great if that's the sort of holiday you like doing. The con to that is that sometimes it can be a little restrictive. So, and this is why you need to be very careful with who you choose to go with and what itinerary you choose. You may want more flexibility in your travel. You may want to still go with the group tour, but have some time off to go and see something that perhaps wasn't on the itinerary. Um, I've, I'm quite, you know, I kind of look for escorted group tours that have some free time or where there's something I really want to see in an area and it's not included in, in an itinerary with any of the usual tour groups, that there's time in that place for me to go and see it on my own. Um, so that's, you know, that's, can, if they've got some spare time, that's a good, good thing as well. So it can be a con if there's no time, but then you're on the wrong tour. You need to go and research some other companies and find the ones that do go to the areas that you want to go to. It's very important that you do that. So another pro is that these itineraries are usually jam-packed. And you do usually, you will see all of the main sites of that country or region that you're going to see. <laughs> but the con of that is, 
you are hugely exhausted, don't go on an escorted group tour and think you're going to have a relaxing holiday. Because I'm not. I can't remember one where I haven't felt at the end of it, I needed another holiday. You're forever moving from place to place to place. Sometimes you have long travel days. So, you know, you have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared to be going on the move all the time. If that's not for you, then you need to be very careful what escorted group tours you pick and not pick one that has a large area or region to cover because the travel times will be big. And you can be sat on a coach for six to eight hours some days. It can be quite tiresome. Personally, I don't mind it if I know I'm going somewhere because I like watching the scenery, but you know, it's, it does get uncomfortable after a bit. And it's surprising how tiring it is sitting on a bus. Now the other side to that is you may go to one of these main sites that everybody on the tour has gone there to see, so it's not a problem that you're not seeing it, but you might not get the time there that you would like. There is a schedule to be followed with these tours. You're not going to spend all day in one place. You're going to probably only get half a day there. So if this is somewhere where you wanted to go and you wanted to spend a whole day or a half day, check what the itinerary is saying here and how long you're going to get. You may not get the detailed exploration that you were hoping for of a particular place. You really need to check that if this is something that you really need to do. Now, another pro, now probably the best pro, is you get to meet like-minded people. Now, if you're traveling on your own and you're nervous about, about traveling on your own or going to this particular region, here, you're not going to be on your own. You're going to have a group of people around you and they're going to be like-minded. You know, they're going there because they want to go to that region too. They're ex excited to go and see the same sites as you. So you have already have a common interest. And I cannot say that I've ever been on a tour where I haven't been with great people. I've made great friends for life on these places and it is a massive pro of doing travel this way. Now, I say that I've never had a problem with anybody on any of these tours, and I haven't. I've never sort of fallen out with anyone. But there may be people that perhaps not your cup of tea and you're not going to be close buddies with, but it doesn't matter. You know, there's plenty of people on there. You're going to have friends. You're not going to be on your own. And if you're in a couple, you're going to have other couples you can like, have dinner with and hang out with and have a laugh with. No problem at all. Now, there are certain escorted group tours for solo people now, which uh, in the recent years it's got much more popular. So, you know, previously there was only really a couple that did this. So, Travel Sphere have been having like a sister company, Just You. That's been going for a long time. And um, there's a, there are a couple of others, but for the main ones like Riviera, Jules Verne. They have started the saga, they've all started doing single escorted tours, so only single people are going. So it's, and it's, you know, all, they're trying to do all the tours now, so before it used to be like one or two you could do, but now they seem to be making one date at least a year for solo people. So if you are worried about being the only solo person, that is a good option for you, but I will say this, I have never been on one that is for couples and singles and being the only solo person, there's always been at least one other person travelling on their own. Um, so it's never been an issue for me and I've always gotten with the couples and I'm, for a lot of them I've actually preferred the tours that have been couples. So just my personal preference so don't be worried that about not making friends because you're not traveling with a friend or a partner you will definitely make friends and that is a big pro of this type of travel and there isn't actually a con to that side so that's the hat one done another great thing is you will usually have a tour manager with you 
So a tour, so this you get a tour manager and you get tour guides. So a tour manager will be the person responsible for your overall trip, and usually that is a, a, a tour manager that comes with you from your home country and stays with you throughout the whole trip and until you get back to the airport at the end. On some tours with some companies, they don't send a tour manager with you, so you get a tour guide when you arrive. Um, sometimes you do get a tour manager when you arrive, but it'll be someone from that, that country, and you'll get tour guides as well. And tour guides come, I seem to find, as well as your tour manager, and they will be there for specific regions. So, for example, when um, I went to China, in one region we had one, we had the same tour manager throughout, and we had a tour guide in one region, we flew to the next region, we had a different tour guide, and then we had a different tour guide, when they were expert in that region. But, the, so you get two people looking after you, but the pro of having a tour manager with you is everything's looked after for you. So if you have a problem when you're away, uh, you have a problem with your hotel, or you're not feeling well, or any problem at all. Uh, you lose your passport, you have someone there to help you. You're not on your own. And that is a big pro for, the, for these types of tours. If you haven't got an actual tour manager coming with you from the country, your tour guide that you meet at the other end, if, even if it's not a tour manager, will still help you if you have any issues or emergencies. Now, the, um, the, the last real big pro is that you'll get one price for everything. You won't have to budget for flights, internal flights, internal transfers, hotels, meals, I think, for the most part. Um, everything will be included. And so you have one price. It's easy to, easy to budget for. I'm saying that because on some tours, um, and you can see this as a con, there are some other charges that you may not know about. So you, if your meals aren't included, you need to make sure you budget for those meals that are not included in the itinerary. Um, there will most likely be optional activities where you can choose to do an additional activity that's not on the itinerary. And that's usually like go to a show in the evening or um, in, an, in a free afternoon, go off and do you know, another tour and pay extra for that. And then the other thing, and people don't forget this, is you must tip your drivers, your tour guides and your tour manager. It's really bad et etiquette not to tip them. And make sure that you budget that and you take that money with you. Don't go and at the end of the holiday say, oh no, I've got to find $100 to pay these tips. Make sure you budget that beforehand. But other than maybe some meals, maybe some extra excursions, maybe shopping, if you like shopping, um, and your tips, everything will be included. You won't have to worry about anything else. In summary, I actually think escorted group tours are marvellous. They are brilliant. If you're short on time or you're not confident enough to organise your itinerary, you don't want to travel on your own, on your own, it is made for you. Just make sure you check really carefully that the, that the tour you book is the right one for you. Because the right one for you will be out there. I'm going to do a separate video on the do's and don'ts. Because there are some. <laughs> worth knowing before you book and while you're on there. But other than that, I hope that's helpful to give you an idea of what to expect. But if you have any questions, of course, don't forget to put them in the comments. And if you like my content, please subscribe and like. <laughs> and I will see you all again soon. Thank you for watching.